Hello, I'm Casey Dinges, Senior Managing Director for Public Affairs, Membership and Marketing at the American Society of Civil Engineers. Thanks for joining us for a discussion about sustainable communities. My guests today are Harriet Tregoning, Director, Office of Economic Resilience, Department of Housing and Urban Development, Carlos Monhe, Counselor to Transportation Secretary Anthony Fox, Department of Transportation, and Joel Bove, Associate Administrator for the Office of Policy, Environmental Protection Agency. Together, they represent the Interagency Partnership for Sustainable Communities. Thank you very much for joining me today for this discussion. Harriet, let's start with you. Can you tell us a little bit about the vision for creating sustainable communities? How does this differ from the way communities were created in the past? And how does this interagency partnership enhance the vision? Sure. I mean, in many ways, uh, sustainable communities is a little bit about a return to the past. Uh, when people lived in communities where they could walk to a lot of their daily destinations, so the services that they needed every day, even their jobs, were often just uh, a short walk or a short uh, streetcar ride away. So uh, we heard from a lot of different communities that what they'd really love to be able to do is to figure out ways to put transportation choices in their community, to have more of them, but also to put those choices together with a full range of types of housing. Um, they wanted a walkable neighborhood that was uh, uh, beautiful, with a great environment, with uh, good air quality and good water quality. So uh, it really led us to come together, the three agencies, EPA, HUD, and the Department of Transportation, to say, why don't we see if we can't try to meet uh, our communities halfway, uh, help them realize their aspirations, and work more closely together. Sounds a little bit like uh, Back to the Future. Um, a and bit. does the term triple bottom line come up in the, the terminology? One of the really interesting things about uh, uh, growing communities in a way that gives them transportation and housing choices and, uh, and a clean environment also means that uh, any investment that you make uh, ends up giving you a lot of different uh, types of return. So you end up with uh, a better economy because these places are attractive and they uh, are able to retain the best and the brightest folks mm -hmm. uh, in those communities. It means that, uh, that uh, jobs want to be there. Um, it also means that uh, these are communities where whatever your income, you have, uh, you have more options, you have more affordable housing choices, your transportation costs uh, can really be something that, uh, that are kind of up to you, depending on how you choose to, uh, uh, to travel. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you, you get the dividend of a much cleaner environment, fewer greenhouse gas emissions, fewer conventional air pollutants, and uh, less runoff, uh, cleaner water. Carlos, let's turn to you for a minute. The interagency partnership is a good example of using collaboration to create holistic solutions for communities. What key leadership attributes must civil engineers of the future possess to collaborate more effectively? You know, I think uh, the three agencies, uh, from the leadership down to the regional level, has learned a lot. Uh, and I think there are lessons that are, uh, you can share uh, across the board. Uh, each, uh, each one of our agencies have their own set of rules, their own set of schedules, their own language. And working together takes time, it takes patience, it takes the ability to translate our needs and explaining them to other folks. Um, it also um, requires uh, leadership, but also being able to recognize the strengths in the other partners that are there. You know, DOT, we bring something to the table in, in terms of the dollars that go uh, for infrastructure spending. Uh, HUD obviously uh, has uh, tremendous intellectual uh, leadership in this area, also very flexible dollars when it comes to CDBG and their programs, and EPA has a technical assistance that's second to none. Their ability to, to provide uh, assistance to the communities on the ground and their knowledge of, of uh, a lot of the, the, the green uh, and the environmental issues that, that we all try to work on together. Uh, and so I think the, the lessons for anybody, especially, is, is understanding what our role is and where we can provide the, the greatest strength. Uh, and uh, and uh, civil engineers, uh, I've, I've heard you guys say about it quite a bit, the bridge uh, from science to society. Uh, scientists to society and um, uh, you know the the uh, credibility uh, that, that you bring the knowledge uh, is something that uh, is desperately needed in this area to educate stakeholders uh, to provide political cover uh, to the uh, to the political leaders that are trying to get their visions across uh, to communicate to the public uh, and also to tell the policymakers uh, what you need you know uh, is it uh, flexibility from current standards is it um, uh, policy statements uh, 
uh, that, that, can, uh, that can clarify where we want to go. Joel, we've heard proponents talk about adaptive, non-structural solutions to some of these challenges. What role do they play in healthy communities? Tell me about, tell me about your agency's role in that, too. Great. Well, thanks, Casey. That's a, a great question. I think that, um, that non-structural approaches are, are going and adaptive approaches are going to play an increasingly important role, uh, particularly because of the challenges we face with a changing climate, as well as, obviously, a changing economy. So I think a great example in this space is green infrastructure, for example. So we're looking now at ways of managing stormwater that incorporate natural systems along with built systems. And these are really exciting approaches because they offer an opportunity both to deliver an environmental result in terms of water quality and, and addressing stormwater issues, uh, but at the same time offer a new opportunity to create more livable spaces for communities. They're often less expensive than the traditional tr uh, structural remedies that, we, that we've had. And so we really get this kind of uh, option that delivers across that triple bottom line that, that, that we've talked about. So, um, so we're really excited about this. EPA plays a very significant role in, in this space, obviously, because of our uh, mission to, to protect human health and the environment. Uh, but we're excited about the opportunity to deliver on that core mission in a way that really integrates this broader set of, of right. objectives. So it's really about kind of the, the best solution, not whether it's structural, natural, or some combination of you know various solutions going forward. Absolutely. The, the hybrid solutions are a, are a big part of it here, and there's a real opportunity for civil engineers to play a major role in developing the solutions of the future, working across disciplines with folks like water resource experts, landscape architects, and so forth. So it's an exciting space to be in. Harriet, Carlos, and Joel, thanks again for coming in today for a very informative discussion. And thank you for joining us. For more information, go to ASCE's website at asce.org. And we'll see you next time on the ASCE Interchange. <laughs>